One of the things that really drew me to witchcraft was the physical side of it, meeting with the metaphysical, the science evidence-based stuff, meeting with the spiritual faith-based stuff. I was very much rooted in evidence, science, and so my beliefs have that foundation of what I had perceived as reality. This book is called Psychic Witch. I'll have it linked down below. It's one of my favorite books. On page 12 and 13, it talks about how reality is energy. The psychic witch lives in a state of enchantment, seeing all things as magical and understanding that the universe is composed of endless possibilities and potential. The psychic witch sees a door where others see a wall, recognizing that all things are connected and related to one another. The psychic witch knows how to put energies into action to achieve a particular outcome consciously. This is magic. Magic is the manipulation of subtle energies in a specific manner to influence a desired result. It is through altering consciousness and harnessing one's willpower that the psychic witch can cast magic purposefully and with precision. Um, I am just going to read a little bit more because it just does a really perfect job of describing it. If you want to skip through the parts of me reading, just, you know, feel free to. Reality is energy. Reality is composed entirely of energy. Mystics, physics, witches, and other practitioners of magic have always known this truth. This isn't just a mystical perspective. It's also the nature of physics. Everything that seems solid is merely energy, vibrating at a slower rate. I'm going to repeat that again. Everything that seems solid is merely energy, vibrating at a slower rate. When we examine it on a microscopic level, we find that solid matter is made of particles perpetually in motion. Even this book you're holding is just energy. Everything we can touch, hear, see, taste, and smell is simply energy in different forms, being perceived by our senses. But energy is not limited to what we can measure with our senses. And if you think about it, that makes sense. We can't see oxygen, but we know it's there. We can't see lots of things that we know are there. Magnetic fields and radiation are examples of energies that we're constantly interacting with that are invisible to our eyes as are wireless signals and ultraviolet light. So is it really that crazy to think that there are energies of our own self that we have and can manipulate and control because we are energetic beings? So basically, in a sense, look beyond your senses and your reality. So that's really, in a way, the key to manifesting is to feel and be in the reality that you want to be in, even if it's not what you see in front of you, because you know that what you see in front of you is not ultimately the truth. Money comes and goes, things happen and don't, and it's just a part of life and it's not something we can control necessarily by holding on to it so tightly. This is one of the ways that magic is in our daily life. Have you ever thought of someone you haven't communicated with in a long time and suddenly they called or texted you? Have you ever had a gut feeling about someone or a situation that turned out to be correct? Have you ever experienced deja vu or had a dream that came to pass? Almost everybody has had moments when these other senses have suddenly opened. Even if it's short-lived, we still have a whole system of perception that has only gone dormant in our species, but is still there waiting to reawaken. This also carries through when it comes to the psychic perception of subtle energy. So I'm not going to sit here and read this whole book. I could. Maybe I'll do an Audible. I don't know. Audible sponsor me. But anyway, so... It's just, it really helps bridge it together. And this book, oops, and this book is another one that I really wanted to reference um, a couple paragraphs in because it really just explains things, again, so well. It's written by Dr. Joe Dispenza. It's called Becoming Supernatural, and my dog tried to eat it, but the book survived. Wouldn't it be wonderful during a meditation to disconnect your association to all the elements in your outer environment? 
to get beyond your body, your fears, and your schedule, your 3D reality. And forget about your familiar past and your predictable future. If you do it right, you will even lose track of time. As you overcome your automatic thinking, your emotions, and your habits and meditation, that is exactly what happens. You get beyond your body, your environment, and time. You weaken the energetic bonds with your past present reality and find yourself in the present moment. Only in the present moment can you call back your energy. Can you call your energy back to you? The instant you notice what's happening, so another common thing with meditation is that a lot of people are like, I get distracted, I can't do it. That doesn't mean you're not doing it. It's okay if you get distracted. You just bring your attention back to your breath. You don't get angry that you got distracted. It's about just sitting still in the moment. And if your mind wanders, it's part of it. Just bring your mind back to your breath. The instant you notice what's happening, the distraction, the emotion, the fear, whatever it may be, that you are putting all of your attention on that emotion. You become aware that you're investing your energy into the past because emotions are records of the past. So you stop and return to the present moment and you begin to disinvest your attention and energy out of the past. Stop. Every time you pause, settle your body down and return to the present moment, you're telling your body that it's no longer the mind, you are the mind. These books speak in and of themselves. These books changed my life. But don't just take my word for it. Don't just take a book's word for it. Explore it for yourself. I first heard about air manipulation and controlling incense smoke with your thoughts. And it sounds crazy. And I was like, okay, I'm actually gonna try though. And I sat down, I meditated, and I was able to do it. Like, I have video evidence of this happening. Like, I, can't, I don't know, you know, the fact that we can control smoke in our energetic field just shows how powerful we are. Emotions are energies. You know, we choose what to put our focus and our energies into. I mean, it's magic, and it's also our existence and reality magic is life in a way to me the next i'll talk about some of the like daily ways that i practice witchcraft i love breath work it's a way to release stagnant energy that's stuck in your body and to release emotions and it just feels really good it's there's lots of um videos on breath work on youtube there's lots of books about it and resources Another big thing, and you'll see it trending, is a lot of witches love yoga. Yoga is such a great way to connect with your body, and it feels so good. It's so good for you. I could go, I could make a whole video about yoga. But one of the ways you can make it a little more magical, other than like incense, candles, really making it a ritual and a beautiful practice that feels good, is I will create my own yoga sequences based around intentions and affirmations. So I might be doing, you know, certain poses that correspond with the way I want to feel and the way of my intention for that practice. It may be self-love or confidence. Another exercise that I love to do um, regularly is when I'm in the shower or I'm taking a bath or even washing my hands or my face, I will imagine negativities and lower vibrations like washing down and off of me and swirling down into the drain away and cleansing my mind, body, and spirit. And I know that may sound a little redundant to some people to just sit and like imagine, but to sit and use your mind and your imagination and your intention, that is the energy that I'm talking about. That is a way we can intentionally use our energy to cleanse ourselves, mind, body, and spirit. Our imagination and where we direct our energy is powerful. So it may sound silly to some, but it's a powerful practice and I encourage you to try it. Another fun thing you can do is charm and enchant jewelry. One way to enchant it is to hold it in your hands and to imagine and speak out loud your intention. And a lot of jewelry has metaphysical properties 
already. So you can look up metaphysical properties of amethyst and correspond it with your intentions and say affirmations and same with, you know, citrine or really any jewelry. It doesn't even have to be a crystal. Um, gold really represents wealth and when you think of gold you think luxurious and you know whatever you think of when you think of these elements that is your intention. It's the vibe. It's the energy. It's powerful. It's a thing. Something I love to do is color magic. So I will correspond colors with my lipstick, my makeup, my eyeliner, my clothes, my undergarments, my jewelry, and use colors as intentions. So certain colors carry certain vibrations and just energies and feels to them. And it can be very particular to the person as well. So red is associated with anger and passion and power. And black can also be associated with power, mystery, dark, protection. Um, brown is very grounding. Um, blue, people are more inclined to trust people when they're wearing blue. There is psychology behind colors and us seeing colors. There's a reason certain colors are used in logos. It is psychology and it is magic. It's something to look into. <sighs> this one is a biggie. It can be hard to do when you struggle with depression but we can do hard things and just keep telling yourself that and I'm sending you love if you were struggling with this, I've been there. But decluttering our space, it removes so much stagnant energy and it opens up channels for new energy and new opportunities and new blessings to come into our life. We are energetic beings. There's a reason it feels so good after you've cleaned your space because we are decluttering old stagnant energy, making new room for new beautiful opportunity. Creating a sacred space, creating an altar or some area, even if it's within yourself, that you find this inner peace and connection with the universe. Now, I say the universe, but really the universe, spirit, God, we're all kind of talking about the same thing. And it's really whatever you want to call it. You can even just honor it as just the energy and power within your own being. I feel like people try to understand concepts like God in a very human and mind logical way, but it's not really something that can be explained and used with logic. It's something that you have to feel and be open-minded to and tolerant and curious about. And if you're not in a place to be there, that's okay. We are all on our own journeys. But I don't feel like it's a concept meant to be understood by humans. I feel like it's a concept meant to be felt. The universe, the oneness, this peace that I'm talking about. That feeling of love and connection. This is kind of an out of the box one, but I've always been drawn to martial arts and the aesthetic and the vibe and the energy and there's something very magical about martial arts and dropping into your body and getting into the flow of the universe into that no mind state when you are rolling or sparring and you know training and you just get into the rhythm and you're not in your head you're not thinking you're just doing and it's such a beautiful way to connect with your body and the universe to just be and do rather than to be thinking and you know you notice that in martial arts if you try to think things out you can trip yourself up you have to go into this flow state to get into this rhythm and it's such a great way to like practice bringing that into your daily life also to feel powerful martial arts also has always helped me channel my anger in a healthy way um, intense exercise just in general so if you don't vibe with martial arts intense exercise so let's say you really like yoga do something like hot yoga you know some really strenuous if you're able to um, and if you want to, if you enjoy it, but I encourage you to get some like strenuous exercise. You are heaving and, you know, sweating and heart rates up as high as it can get in a healthy way. And that is just a very powerful way to get into our bodies and to get into our energy and to um, 
hold power in our bodies and harness this energy as well as build confidence and it's good for you so I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite quotes all is one and one is all the universe is the all and you are the one all's existence and ability to move forward is dependent on this law the universe is might infinite but little things like structures, planets, people, and animals are what keeps it going. If you die, the world continues on. You will decompose, become nutrients for the plants. Herbivores eat those plants, and carnivores eat those herbivores. They die, and life starts over. The universe always moves forward, a constant cycle. It is the one thing that binds all together. That it is alchemy itself. One is all, all is one. That is from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, one of my favorite animes, and <laughs> it is just a powerful quote, so don't hate on it. Also, I have a tattoo of the show.